Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back. I'm Jeannie and I'm not quite ready yet to transition fully into fall manis. So we're going to do some bright fun summer colors with some fall inspired nail art inspired by these nail art stickers from iGel Beauty. I just love the colors in these leaves and these are the colors I picked from iGel Beauty's LB collection to match the stickers. I think they go perfectly together and I think it's kind of a little bit of summer with a little bit of fall and I think it's the perfect transition mani. I'll be using the acrylic powders as dip as well as the matching gels. So the LB collection from iGel Beauty is a three-in-one collection. So they've got the acrylic powders, they've got the gel polish as well as the nail lacquers. But first we're going to get into a base for the nail art for my gels. So I'm going to be using, this is one of my favorite colors, DDG 49, which is Pearl Rosé, which is a very light sheer pink color, but it has the most gorgeous blue glow. So I'm going to do that as the base for the gel as well as the sticker. So that's going to go on my middle finger and ring finger. I think this color works, but in hindsight, I probably should have used a white as my base because the stickers are kind of transparent. So they're a little more subtle. They don't really pop as much because it's just such a light base, but I still like the way it turned out. I am using these acrylic powders as dip because I'm not really big on monomer, so I am using my iGel Beauty dip liquids. So I'm using my dip base to adhere the dip to my nails. Oh, and I should mention, as my base are the short almond pro gel tips from iGel Beauty. I love these. I think they're like the perfect length. So they're kind of, they're not super short, but they're not super long either. So I think they're a very wearable length, at least for me. So I'm just applying a thin, even layer of dip base to my entire nail. So I remove most of the dip base from my brush and then I start with my brush about the halfway point of my nail. I brush downwards towards my free edge and then I'll work my way upwards towards my cuticle area. And then I'll go ahead and dip into my powder, tap off the excess powder. And then I also wanna make sure that I'm cleaning up my cuticle area, removing any excess product that may be on my skin because I don't wanna cause lifting. So you'll see once I dust this off, just how sheer it is. So I actually end up doing three total layers of it just because I wanted a little bit more color and it to be a little less sheer. Although even with three layers, it is sheer, but I that was, you know, really my intention of using this was because I wanted a sheer color. And of course the glow is a nice bonus. I'm also going to use a stiff scrub brush once the dip base is fully dry to make sure that I'm scrubbing off the excess powder. I do the same thing with clears that I do for sheer colors because even with the sheer colors, you can get graininess or cloudiness if you're not scrubbing off that excess powder. So now I'm going to go ahead and go into layer two. I'm going to let you watch this and then I'll do layer three off camera because it's just the same process and a little repetitive. Once I'm done with my third layer and I've scrubbed off the excess powder, I'm going to go ahead and activate my nails. And the reason I'm activating them is because it's such a sheer color and the next colors I'm going to use are kind of neon. So I don't want to accidentally stain my sheer nails with that neon pigment. So I'd rather go ahead and activate them. Once activated, I'm going to move on to my other colors. So the first one I'm going to be using is LB177, Sunset by the Beach. And this is going to go on my index finger only. This is such a bright and fun neon orange color and I think it's perfect for summertime kind of transition into fall type color. And even though it's very bright, it actually doesn't stain my skin, which I think is an added bonus. 
I hate when a dip powder stains my skin because sometimes it'll just wash off and it's fine, but sometimes it takes like days of scrubbing in order for it to fade, but I don't have any staining here. So you'll see after I dust off the excess powder that there isn't any of that pigment left on my skin. I'd say this isn't fully opaque in one layer, but it's just almost there. I can just see a little bit of my nail line, so I do want to do a second layer. I do do two layers of color anyway when I'm dipping as my normal process. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that second layer before I move on to my next color. Since this color and the next color I'll be using are both solids, I'm going to wait to cap all my nails in clear until I'm done. Technically, I don't have to cap them in clear because they're solid powders. It's really the glitters where it becomes more important. But my personal preference is to cap my colors in solid colors in clear as well. Just because I don't want to accidentally file and buff through the pigment of the color and I don't want it to look like splotchy or a little uneven. It may not happen. I just prefer not to risk it. And the next color I'm going to be using is LB81 Fashionable and that's going to go on the rest of my fingers. So my thumb and my pinky. And I don't know if I'd classify this as a neon color, but it is a really nice bright pink color. And I think it just pairs really beautifully with like the neon orange color and kind of incorporates the color of those flower stickers that I'll be using. While I'm doing my normal dipping process, I kind of want to talk about what's been on my mind lately. So I think I had mentioned it before of... Now we're almost approaching September and I'm not sure what September onwards is going to look like for me. I'm really nervous. So I think I've mentioned before that at work, they require us to be in office for one full week every four weeks. So they kind of assign our weeks. But starting in September, it's going to be every other week. And that makes me super nervous as far as my content because generally when I'm in the office, it's really exhausting for me just the commute into the office on top of just being around people because I'm a very extreme introvert. So being around people all day is just, it just drains me. I don't know if anyone is like that, but it just wipes me out. So generally when I'm in the office, especially like for my one week that I'm required now, I don't do my nails all week. So I either have some press-ons ready if I want to change my nails midweek, but generally I'll just, I won't wear peel base and I'll just wear a mani for the entire week so I don't have to worry about it. But now that it's going to be every other week, that's a lot of time that I can't film content or not even filming, even just doing manis and taking pictures for Instagram, whatever that may be, that that's less time I have to do it. So I'm a little nervous of what that's going to look like because here on YouTube, I upload twice a week. And then on Instagram, you know, I'll upload those pictures for the videos twice a week and then occasionally I'll do other like pictures as well. I may do a reel or I'll just do a mani and just take pictures of that. So I'm not sure what that's going to look like. I mean I'm going to still try. I'm not going to adjust my schedule just yet on YouTube but I will say I am nervous about can I really still continue to do two videos a week knowing that two weeks out of each month I'll be in the office. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I guess I need to get better at like making sure that I'm pre-filming a bunch of content on the weeks that I'm not in the office. But I think, you know, being an ambassador for a few companies, sometimes they send new releases and they're not as in advance as my filming content. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I just kind of wanted to mention that because I'm not sure whether I'll have to adjust my schedule or not, but I know you all are great and you'll be here regardless, but I just wanted to, just because I'm nervous about it, I wanted to talk about it. I know at first it's going to take a lot of adjustment for me and it's going to be painful for probably quite a while trying to readjust to being in the office that often, but I think best case scenario, I'll start to get used to it and then during the evenings, I can start doing content again and just kind of get into more of a routine. So that's what we're going to hope for. 
But back to my Manny, I went ahead and did two dips each for each of the colors. And so now I'm gonna cap them in clear. So there's a couple tips and tricks I do when I'm capping in clear. And the first is I use a little more dip base for my clear than I do with any other color because I want the clear to be fully absorbed into that dip base. I don't want to have just like a little bit of dip base where like half of the clear is absorbed, half isn't because that could cause like graininess and cloudiness. But I don't wanna put so much dip base that it starts flooding my cuticles because I don't wanna make a mess. I just put a little extra just to make sure that it's fully absorbed. And you can see after I dip in, it still looks a little bit wet because you can see that clear like quickly being absorbed. And then if there's a little clear, I, sometimes I'll like to just kind of pat it down to help it absorb a little more. But do you see how it looks so wet? I'm gonna leave it and let it dry. And so it's gonna take a little bit longer because it's so wet, but it's gonna turn out better if I just leave it that way. Usually when I'm dipping with a color or a glitter or something that's not a clear, if it looks that wet after I dip in, I'll do an additional dip or two just to make sure that's fully absorbed. Sometimes I'll do that with the clear, but that's risking it. It's really better just to leave it and not double dip. After my dip base is fully dry, I wanna make sure that I'm giving it a really good scrub with a stiff scrub brush. That's gonna remove any of the excess clear and ensure I don't have any graininess or cloudiness. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a generous amount of activator to all my nails. I'll wait at least two minutes for my dip powder to harden, and then I'm gonna go ahead and file and buff off camera. I went ahead and filed and buffed off camera. So here's how the Manny's looking. Ignore the spots on my middle and ring finger. Those are not from the dip powders. They're actually from my tip application. They're a little bit of air bubbles. Normally I would just redo them. I don't wanna risk getting greenies, but I am wearing peel base underneath my tips, which is why I'm just gonna leave it for this Manny and then I'll pop this off so I don't worry about moisture getting trapped in. So now we're gonna get into a little bit of gel art. So I've got my two gels from the duos and these are the matching gels to the powders. So Sunset by the Beach is the orange and then Fashionable is the pink. So I'm gonna use the same matching colors. I'm just applying a little bit of those to my resin palette to make it easier to pick up. And then we're gonna do some art on the index finger, no, ring finger and middle finger. I'm not gonna go too crazy with my design. I just wanna create a little bit of negative space on the middle of my nail. So I'm gonna apply that gel at my free edge and at my cuticle area, and it's gonna be like, not straight lines, it's gonna be kind of squiggly spots where I'm going to apply a little bit of orange and a little bit of pink to each nail. But I wanna start with applying the gel to try to create my outline. Once I've got kind of mapped out where I want the color to be, I'll start filling it in. So I just wanna make sure I have enough color, but I don't want too much because these are short tips. So I don't have a whole lot of nail estate. But once I've got that mapped out, I will take that liner brush and I'll start kind of filling in that space. I am being really careful though because I don't want my gel to be too thick or else it could have problems curing all the way through. It could wrinkle when I'm curing it. So I wanna make sure that I'm applying the polish evenly. So it's a little bit harder with the liner brush. So I'm just making sure that I'm redispersing it. It probably would have been better if I used, once I've got the outline with my liner brush, I could have used the brush that's in the bottle to apply it more evenly to fill in that color. But because the space was so small, I figured I'd just use the liner brush. It just takes a little bit longer. And I'm also being a little bit slower and a little more careful because I am doing this on my dominant hand, which means I'm using my non-dominant hand to try to fill in this space, which is exactly why it's more of like a squiggly line space rather than straight lines, because I don't know if I could do a straight line with my non-dominant hand. Once I'm happy with that, I'm not going to cure just yet, but I figured because I'm using the same liner brush, I'm going to do all in one color first. So I'm moving on to my ring finger and I'm using the same orange, but instead of at my free edge area, I'm going to do the same type design at my cuticle area. So I'm just going to same thing, outline where kind of I want that color. And then once I've got that mapped out, when I once I have that outlined, I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. 
and then I will give my nails a flash cure for about 10 to 15 seconds just so it doesn't move on me and then I'll move on to the pink which I'll do at my cuticle area on my middle finger and at my free edge on my ring finger. I gave my nails a full cure for 60 seconds and once that's fully cured and cooled a little bit I'm going to go ahead and wipe off the tacky layer of that polish using some isopropyl alcohol and a lint-free wipe and the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be using the stickers next and the stickers don't really stick well to that inhibition layer so I want to remove it before I apply my stickers. I'm going to be using a dip top coat instead of gel so I need to protect the stickers because if I went directly on top of the stickers with the activator they're so thin they would melt so I'm going to protect them with a layer of clear. The dip base won't impact the stickers or the gel I have on my nails which is why I'm using that to cap my nails in clear. Sometimes I'll just use like an air dry smudge free top coat instead of capping in clear but these powders are so thin even with that extra cap in clear they're not thick at all.
I'm going to go ahead and activate the nails that I capped in clear and wait a full two minutes. I'm not going to do any filing because I did that previously before I did the gel and the stickers, but I will do just a quick buff on the surface just to make sure everything is smooth. I did a quick buff off camera, so now I'm ready to start with my dip top coat. And in order for your top coat to dry, it does need activator. So I'm applying one final layer of activator to all my nails. I'm going to wait a full two minutes for the activator to dry before I go in with my top coat. Timing is key because if you don't wait long enough, you could harden your brush. But if you wait too long, your dip top coat won't dry. So going in with my first layer of top coat, I'm applying it in two to three swipes on each nail, making sure I'm fairly quick about it because I don't want to contaminate my brush. And in between each nail, I'm making sure to wipe my brush on a lint-free wipe before returning it to the bottle. And by the time I'm done with my fifth nail, I'm ready to go in with my second layer of dip top coat. And you can tell it's ready because your nails will start looking a little dull and wrinkly. So for my second layer, I want to take my time a little bit more. I want to make sure that I've got my entire nail covered and I'm also capping my free edge. As always, I'm gonna finish off my Manny by rehydrating my cuticles with my Scales of Mermaid cuticle oil. This was the June limited edition scent, Show Me Your Fishy Face. This is my absolutely favorite scent by Scales of a Mermaid. It is almost all gone and I am so sad. So I've been petitioning in the group to have it added to the main line because I do not want to run out. Even though I'm almost out, I still like to lather myself in it just because it smells so good. And plus it's just so hydrating because my skin is always so dry after I do a mani. Even though the scent is no longer available, at least until I convince Pat to make it mainline, there are a lot of amazing scents by Scales of Mermaid available. And if there's anything that catches your interest, you could always use my ambassador code Genie10 to save 10% off your orders. So that pretty much wraps up today's video and a huge thank you to iGel Beauty for continuing to support me and for sponsoring this video. I had so much fun creating this Manny and it kind of captures what I was hoping for. That kind of like grasping on to the last bit of summer but starting to transition a little bit into fall. But I am absolutely loving these bright fun colors. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue creating content like this. It also helps YouTube recommend me to others, which helps grow my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload content every Monday and Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.